and the Spider The bee and the spider once entered into a warm debate about who was the better artist. The spider urged her skill in the mathematics and asserted that no one was half so well acquainted as herself with the construction of lines, angles, squares, and circles. That the web she daily wove was a specimen of art inimitable by any other creature in the universe, and besides, that her works were derived from herself alone, the product of her own bowels, whereas the boasted honey of the bee was stolen from every herb and flower of the field, nay, that she had obligations even to the meanest weeds. To this the bee replied that she was in hopes that the art of extracting honey from the meanest weeds would at least have been allowed her as an excellence, and that as to her stealing sweets from the herbs and flowers of the field, her skill was there so conspicuous that no flower ever suffered the least diminution of its fragrance from so delicate an operation. Then, as to the spider's vaunted knowledge in the construction of lines and angles, she believed she might safely rest the merits of her cause on the regularity alone of her combs. But since she could add to this the sweetness and excellence of her honey, and the various purposes for which her wax was employed, she had nothing to fear from a comparison of her skill with that of the weaver of a flimsy cobweb, for the value of every art, she observed, is chiefly to be estimated by its use. Neither ingenuity nor learning is entitled to regard, but in proportion as they contribute to the happiness of life. The Wolf and His Shadow A wolf, who was roaming about on the plain when the sun was getting low in the sky, was much impressed by the size of his shadow, and said to himself, I had no idea I was so big. Fancy my being afraid of a lion. Why, I, not he, ought to be the king of the beasts. And, heedless of danger, he strutted about, as if there could be no doubt at all about it. Just then a lion sprang upon him, and began to devour him. Alas, he cried, had I not lost sight of the facts, I shouldn't have been ruined by my fancies. Self-importance is usually self-deception. The Two Springs Two springs, which issued from the same mountain, began their course together. One of them took her way in a silent and gentle stream, while the other rushed along with a sounding and rapid current. Sister, said the latter, at the rate you move, you will probably be dried up before you advance much farther, whereas for myself I will venture a wager that within two or three hundred furlongs I shall become navigable, and after distributing commerce and wealth wherever I flow, I shall majestically proceed to pay my tribute to the ocean. So farewell, dear sister, and patiently submit to your fate." Her sister made no reply, but calmly descending to the meadows below, increased her stream by numberless little rills, which she collected in her progress, till at length she was enabled to rise into a considerable river, while the proud stream, which had the vanity to depend solely upon her own sufficiency, continued a shallow brook, and was glad at last to be helped forward by throwing herself into the arms of her despised sister. There is more to be expected from sedate and silent than from noisy, turbulent, and ostentatious beginnings. <laughs>